Hello everyone, my name is Stanley. My name is Nathan. And today we will be going over the poem Go Lovely Rose by Edmund Waller. Go Lovely Rose by Edmund Waller. Go Lovely Rose, tell her that wastes her time and me. Then now she knows, when I resemble her to thee, how sweet and fair she seems to be. Tell her that's young, and shuns to have her graces spied, that hadst thou sprung, in deserts where no man abide, thou must have uncommended died. Small is the worth of beauty from the light retired. Bid her come forth, suffer herself to be desired, and not blush so to be admired. Then die, that she, the common fate of all things rare, may reading thee how small a part of time they share, that are so wondrous, sweet, and fair. Okay, so Nathan, so while reading the poem, did you notice any troubling vocabulary? Well, when I was reading the poem, I noticed that Waller does not use a lot of jargons or peculiar vocabulary. I mean, when looking at the poem, the most difficult words seem to be wondrous and resemble. But his diction is very eloquent, and his balance between the short, urgent, and the long, melancholy syntax contributes to a deeper meaning to the poem beyond just the literal text. I agree with you, Nathan. I think the poem is very straightforward and that Waller doesn't use a lot of difficult vocabularies, but yet he is able to organize his syntax and diction in a way that gives the poem a deeper meaning. Yes, I agree with you. By using simple vocabulary and a deeper meaning, he contrasts that and it leads to an even deeper meaning in the poem. Now, Stanley, I want to ask you, when you were reading the poem, did you analyze any dramatic situations while you were reading? Yes, I noticed that there is a dramatic situation at line 16 where Waller writes, Then die that she, the common fate of all things rare. I think the term in the diction, in particular the word die, contributes to a more dramatic tone, which helps persuade his lover into courtship. At the same time, I think the speaker may be mourning over the loss of a potential love affair that he lost and that the one that he debuts desires. Yeah, so I really agree with you, Stanley. I mean, the dramatic situation is very important because as youthful people, we don't realize how short life is or how easily life can be gone. Mm. So I think that by emphasizing how fast you could possibly die, it gives a sense of urgency to this lover who he's sending the rose to. Mm. Okay, so we know that Waller is the one writing the poem, but who do you think the speaker of the poem is? Well, first of all, I don't think the speaker of the poem is Edmund Waller himself. But I think the speaker is a man who is trying to court his lover into a relationship. It is interesting how the speaker uses the pronoun they instead of we at the second to the last line of the poem. And this may indicate that the rose serves as a reminder for the woman's mortality when her beauty withers away. Yeah, I agree with you, Nathan. I think the speaker is a man who is trying to court his, the young lady who is his lover. And the speaker is trying to use a rose as a messenger to deliver his message to his audience, who is the woman that she's trying to court. Yes, and I also want to point out something. Uh, we did a little historical background of this time period. And we have a theory that this man may actually be someone who is very old. That's why there's an emphasis on die in the last stanza, because during that time period, often rich British men were very old, and these young women did not want to marry the young men because they were not established enough to start a family. Mm -hmm. So that leads us to believe that this man actually may be very old and may, might be about to pass away soon. Yes, so now Stanley, I want to ask you, do you think there's a very something important about the tone? I mean, maybe a shift, maybe a tone that emphasizes something? Yes, so I think Waller uses a very admiring, affectionate, yet regretful tone. Yes. And there is a tone shift in stanza 4 where it goes from admiring to a regretful tone, which causes the speaker to become more impatient. Yes. He's trying to wait for his lover. And I think this may suggest that some traumatic events may have happened during that time. Um, which can, we can tell from repeating emphasis on death, like you mentioned oh, yes. earlier before. 
which helps portray the overall meaning of a poem of how love is ephemeral and short-lived. Yeah, so when I saw that tone change, I kind of felt it was a very important tone change in the fact that he's actually trying to make a move and he's getting impatient and he just, he just wants to go for it right now. I think that tone shift really helps make sure that we, us readers, know that he's not very urgent for this woman. I think another good point to point out is that the title, look at the title, Go Lovely Rose. I mean, he says, go, and then comma, Lovely Rose, which is a very assertive, assertive tone yes. telling the, his lover to be more open to him. Oh well, yes, I agree with you. So Stanley, as you were reading the poem, did you um, recognize any literary elements or rhetorical devices? For sure, yeah, I noticed that there are a lot of metaphors. Yes. The poem itself is an extended metaphor comparing the rose to the speaker's lover. Um, I think it's interesting how the speaker chooses to compare his lover to a rose instead of other flowers. Mm -hmm. And I think this is because by picking the more commonly known flower, the speaker can allow the reader to better understand the comparison. And on the other hand, the comparison also shows the connotations of the rose, which is a symbol for love, beauty, and passion. And furthermore, by personifying the rose as a real person, mm -hmm. I think the speaker also reinforces his message of how his lover should cling to her beauty and youth while they last. Yes. So another symbol that I thought was very important was the desert mentioned in line 9. I mean, it kind of makes it seem that this woman is isolated because no one lives in a desert where it's very hot and dry. And it kind of emphasizes that this woman is very seclusive and likes to stay in and not talk with the men of this, of this time period. And I also think that it's very important to realize that this woman is shy and it really helps to contribute to this poem because it gives us insight on more about who this woman is and her personality. You brought up a good point. I think the desert is not physically that the describing how the woman is living in an isolated place but moreover, it's about talking about how the woman shuts herself from the rest of the society and tries to conceal her beauty by refusing to open herself. And I think um, this causes her to be ostracized from the rest of the society, which is why the this, this speaker chooses to write this poem to reverse that situation. Yeah. Another thing that I noticed is that there is a repetition of sweet and fair mm -hmm. in stanza one and stanza four. And I think the repetition of sweet and fair is a very obvious um, indication that the speaker is trying to compliment the woman and praising her to show his admiration towards her. Okay. So, as you were reading the poem, did you notice any thematic statements or an overall theme about the poem? I think one of the themes in the poem is that life is short and that beauty is ephemeral and it should not be wasted. Um, in particular, if we look at the poem where it says, Bid her come forth, suffer herself to be desired, and not blush so to be admired. The speaker is definitely talking about how his young lady should treasure his teenage years and cling to his beauty while it lasts. Yes, I agree with you. And another a very important theme that I saw was I mean, I think he criticized the patriarchal society somewhat of a way because he's criti criticizing them because in this kind of male-dominated society, women are expected to stay in the home, clean, cook, and raise children. And because of this, a lot of beautiful women are not able to really just expose themselves and just reveal their beauty because they're too busy taking care of food, children, and cleaning the home. So I think that based on that, he's kind of criticizing the society in Great Britain at this time period because he wants women to be more expressive about themselves. And I think that's a very important thematic statement that is kind of um, sort of embedded throughout the poem. Yeah, I think the point that you mentioned, it's not really explicitly stated in the poem, but it's more of implied that women should not be confined by the societal expectations and the conventional gender roles. Instead, they should act out of their social respect in that they should be more open, right? They should go on and pursue their passions instead of being manipulated by their husband and 
forcing themselves to stay at home all the time. Yes, I agree, I agree with you as well on that point. Okay. So Stanley, when you were interpreting the meaning of the poem, did you take a literary or figurative approach? And I was wondering if you would like to um, share some insight on what your meaning of the poem is. Sure. So for me personally, I took more of a literal approach mm -hmm. because I think the poem is very straightforward and should just be taken literally. Mm -hmm. um, throughout the poem, I think there is a very strong indication that the speaker is trying to argue that women should not confine their beauty because if they confine their beauty, then no one is able to enjoy it and the world will not be able to see and appreciate their beauty. Um, we can see that throughout the poem, the speaker is trying to tell his lover that he should, she should appreciate her youth while it lasts because life is short and that beauty only lasts for a short amount of time. So what do you think? What's your approach on the meaning of the poem? Well, when I was interpreting the meaning, I took a very figurative approach to the meaning. And when I first thought about it, I thought it was a little far-fetched. But doing a lot of background research actually helped me um, further prove that this is a very feasible meaning. Mm -hmm. So what I think the meaning of the poem is, is that Edmund Waller is trying to show the appreciation for how great Britain is. Mm -hmm. In this poem, he talks about how lovely this woman is and how great she is and how much he wants to be with her. And this woman symbolizes Great Britain. Edmund Waller realizes how great Great Britain is because he got exiled in 1645 and a year later he published these poems. And after he got exiled, he realized just how great of a country Great Britain was compared to these other countries. Mm -hmm. So I think that what he's ultimately trying to say is that Great Britain is the best country. He shows a lot of nationalism figuratively in this poem by talking about how beautiful Great Britain is. And I think it's very important to realize that he wants to hurry up and finish his exile. So the tone shift that occurs from the second stanza to the third stanza, ultimately, I think that shows how much he wants to be back in Great Britain. Mm -hmm. And that's how I interpreted the meaning of the poem. Wow. That's a very good point that you brought up. I didn't know that the speaker's life, that Waller's life can have such a big impact on the poem and the meaning of the poem. Um, I agree with you in that I think because Waller wrote this poem during the time that he was exiled, he could be reminiscing about Great Britain and perhaps someone that he had missed in Great Britain. Um, which is why that this poem, I think, although the speaker is not Waller himself, it's very semi, it can be semi-autobiographical in that the poem may be ref a reflection of Waller's life. Well now, that concludes our presentation on Go Lovely Rose. And now we are going to give you guys discussion questions. These are meant to um, be very open-ended and don't look them up online because you're not going to find the answer. Stanley, I want to ask you, what's your favorite discussion question and I can I get your answer? For me personally, my favorite discussion question is number five. Based on the speaker's style of writing, describe some characteristics of the speaker. I think based on the style of writing, the speaker can be very impulsive and sometimes very impatient because the speaker is eagerly waiting for the lover to try to um, open up to him. You know, on the other hand, I think the speaker may also be very contemplative and reflect a lot about his own life as well as how um, it can influence by others. So Nathan, what's your favorite discussion question? Well, personally, my favorite discussion question is number eight. Do you think Edmund Waller talks just as smoothly with the ladies just as he does in this poem? Mm -hmm. Well, personally, I think that Edmund, Le Edmund Waller talks just as smoothly with the ladies. I feel like as a, as a very good um, author of poems and stuff, I feel like he would have very eloquent la uh, language. I feel that he was a big playboy during his time in Great Britain and throughout his life. Well, now that concludes our presentation. And after you finish your discussion questions, 
Please put on the bottom which discussion question was your favorite. Thank you for your attention.